How's it going everybody? This is Vita Bush. This is the eTaker EP300 portable power station. It's quite different than any other ones I've tested because it's super dense. This has 303 watt hours of energy just in this little package. Typical power stations around 250 watt hours might be twice the size of this. I reviewed this one a long time ago and this has 170 watt hours. Look at the volume of this is roughly the same as this one. So they really packed all the batteries in there and not waste any space. The outer shell is anodized aluminum so it can make the walls a bit thinner. Let me unbox this thing and show you what comes with it. This has got to be the densest power station I've ever handled. 12 volt car adapter to a 12 volt car adapter. A USB-C cable and a 65 watt gallium nitride fast charger. It has foldable AC prongs, nothing on the outer edges except this USB-C port here. And lastly, the manual. This is the P300 version with 303 watt hours of energy. The most relevant thing I like to know is the AC output power, 350 watts. Putting this on the scale, it does weigh 7.4 pounds. There's four different ways to charge it. You can plug in a DC barrel plug AC adapter, a solar panel into the same hole. This is a DC 5521, 5.5 millimeter outer diameter barrel connector and a 2.1 millimeter inner diameter. So that fits right there. The third way to charge it is through the car adapter port right here. The fourth way, which is not always present in power station, is you can put it in through the USB-C. It comes with the 65 watt power adapter and the USB-C charge cable. What's missing here is direct AC input. If you look around this device, there is no AC input anywhere else. All the ports are from the front. In terms of output, you have a 12 volt, 12 amps, although I measure 10 amp output on this because when I went to 12 amps, it actually cut this thing off. So I believe this is supposed to be 120 watts instead. There's also two USB-A 12 watt output, a 100 watt USB-C output, the two DC5521 ports are six amp each. The low LED light is five watts and the high LED light is 10 watts. The AC ports together can go up to 350 watts. For a battery station of this size, it's really good to power laptops. Because it's 350 watts, I wouldn't try to power any kind of microwaves heating devices, hair dryers, and the like. This is a mighty little power station, really great for smaller devices. The LCD screen here, the battery power, 15%. Time to empty is 5.3 hours at its current rate. Input or output port gets shown here, and these LED lights show which ports are turned on or off. For each of these control, you just press and hold it to turn it on. The DC and cigarette lighter is on, press and hold USB to turn on USB A and C. Press and hold the AC button and it'll turn on. It says F60, that's 60 Hertz. If you press AC three times, it'll switch to 50 Hertz. If you press it three more times, it'll go back to 60 Hertz. Be careful with this because it's not very good to drive 60 Hertz devices with 50 Hertz. Lastly, you can press the LED button here to turn on the LED in the back. I'm just gonna put my hand here so it's not too blinding. Press it once to make it go brighter it slowly glows brighter rather than a quick switch. Press it again for SOS. Press it again for quick flashing. Press it again to turn off. The outer screen of the LED is very frosted, so it gives a diffused light. When you turn on the LED, you can still see each individual LED and there are 36 total of them. The handle folds forward, but it does not go in front of the LCD. If you fold it back, it can completely sit flat. The handle itself, it's made out of aluminum. The inside of the handle is lined with this firm rubber material. Let's take a look at the bottom. Rubber feet, nothing much to see here. Overall, if you take a look all around the device, there are no exposed screws anywhere. There are actually no holes with rubber plugs. Normally this plug is attached to the front. Now this is a good and bad thing. Good because if you remove it, then it won't dangle around and you can plug your things in here. Bad in that if you're not good with keeping these little caps around, you might actually lose this. This charging from the 12 volt adapter at 10 amps, it took two hours and 17 minutes. I got a total of 272 watt hours, which is an efficiency rate of 89.7%. That's a pretty expected efficiency rate. I discharged it through the AC port at 310 watts. The maximum is 350 watts and it cut off around 8% left. So I reduced it to 110 watts output. And through that, I got a total of 272 watt hours, which is also an efficiency level of 89.7%. Typically the AC output 
is a lot less efficient than the DC output. So I'm pretty surprised how these two are very similar in this test. I've managed to get it to say OTC SUS. This is an error mode. Touching it, it feels warm because it's just discharged the entire battery bank. So let's let it cool down before I start charging it. Starting with the power station at 0%, I'm gonna use the 65 watt USB-C power adapter to charge it. We're starting with zero kilowatt hour and it's using about 73 watts right now to charge. There's some conversion inefficiency. So 75 watts in here, 65 watts out and eventually 58 watts in to the battery inside here. It's been about 45 minutes and has charged the power station about 15%. The AC adapter has warmed up to around 155 degrees. I'm told this is a normal behavior for the AC adapter. It is quite warm if you touch it. I certainly can't hold on to this for a long period of time. A zero to 100% charge took six hours and two minutes. The total energy used to charge it is 384 watt hours. So that took 126% of the total capacity. That means there's a loss of 26% through this AC power plug. It comes with this interesting power plug. This is so you can plug it into here and plug the other end into your car to charge it. Now keep in mind, this is not a car starter. It's a car battery charger. So it's not gonna give you like 400 amps out of this. It's only gonna give you like 10, 12 amps. If you happen to run it really low, leave the lights on or something, then you can slowly charge it back up. Let's give the car charging thing a try. This cable is super convenient because you never have to open up your hood to access the battery there. All you have to do is find your car adapter port plug this in and you want to be very careful with this end because this is live voltages here plug this into our power station turn on the car but not start the engine and then turn on the dc power output power shows is 25 35 watts and this is power going out of this power cable into the car charging the battery in the car just wait for the car to collect some energy and then you can attempt to start it if you're trying to use this thing in really tight spaces like inside a van inside a car having a power station that's super compact is really convenient it's not as bulky so it can fit in more places you can have multiple units so that you have more energy storage if you guys are interested in this product check out my affiliate link down in the video description below thanks for watching this video until next time